Hello, welcome back to City Planner Place, where we are building a new town in Clearwater County. And I'm very excited to get to build that town, which is being created because of this dam. So this dam was built in the previous episode and it caused us all sorts of problems. It's just like a, a water sinkhole, what? <laughs> oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh boy. <laughs> Oh, that was not what I wanted to happen. Oh, no. But your feedback has helped me correct it, particularly Zachary Neighbor's comment, which I'm not going to read to you, uh, but it's right here. <laughs> the gist of it is that I had my water sources in the wrong spot and they were actually acting as vacuum cleaners, uh, so to speak, like little hoovers, uh, rather than uh, water sources. So uh, let's take a look at what I've done. So. I went through here and one of the things Zachary recommended was pushing the water source back. So I did that and I also created a small water source over here. And then I came over to this river. There were a whole bunch of water sources going through here and they were doing different things, but I think I screwed them up. So I decided to make one larger water source and try to make it seem like it's coming out of this rock. So I calmed it down a bit. And one thing you'll notice as we come through, I have tried to address number three in his bulleted list. You're bad at, at terraforming the river. <laughs> Don't do it. Uh, I tried to, to fix that. I, you know, one of the problems that I had as I was trying to create uh, a working river was that I, I created really sharp edges and that's pretty unreasonable. The river would erode those edges uh, unless you're, unless it's the Grand Canyon or something where it would just carve down into the earth with a gentle river like this and you know i just load it up and it looks like there's a couple of issues this does improve when it runs for a while and one of the reasons it does is because of what i've done right here so the water is not coming around and that is because i've placed two of these water sources as low as they can go so here's the top i went all the way to the bottom and the consequence of what that does is it acts as a vacuum so the water comes in here and it sucks down so it'll never go past that and that is what map makers do, as Zachary uh, very aptly points out, to do a number of really interesting things. So if we come back here and we take a look, so there's a water source right here. And I've always wondered how this was able to happen. Well, you put this all the way down, and now it can appear that the water is going underground and outletting right here, even though it's not actually. And on the edge of the map, to keep the water flowing out towards the ocean, there's another vacuum right here and you can kind of see it doing some things here. It's sucking down and it's pulling the water out to the side of the map. So I took the same approach and uh, did some things over here. So when I come in, you see that I uh, it was flowing back up here as well. I added one of those vacuum sources here. It slows the water down here and now it flows right into here without any problems. The other thing that this has done is normalize this water, up, the power output to 224 megawatts, which I am completely fine with. The other thing I did, so this came from a comment in the most recent Verde Beach video that I've been doing all of my switchbacks wrong. So I was continuing to slope around the corners rather than flattening out around the corners. And you just think about it a little bit, that makes a ton of sense. You'd want the corner where you're gonna have the most visibility issues to be flat. So uh, rather than going downhill or going uphill, there you are. And then you slope up until you get to the next one. So I've corrected those and we're in a good spot. So back to our new town. First of all, the name of this water source is Otter Lake. And it is named Otter Lake because when the workers were constructing the dam, they noticed otters playing in the mouth of this, uh, the, the small lake that was here, the, the, the river. And as it was dammed, it became a lake and uh, they thought that that was a fitting name. And that's, that's how things get named. You know, someone sees something, uh, it fits and there you go. So as this lake was constructed because of this dam, uh, a number of the workers on the project were, became really enamored with this place. They spent many, many months, years constructing this dam. And a few of them decided that this is really where they want to spend the rest of their lives. So when projects like this occur, the entities building the projects don't just buy the amount of land they need, 
they buy the amount of land that they need and the amount of and, and then whatever land is around it that they're forced to buy. So as a result, uh, when this switchback road was built, it's very likely that the DOT had to buy this whole chunk of land. And now they have a number of pieces of land that they have to manage that they no longer want. So uh, if you go to your local DOT's real estate page, you will see a number of properties for sale by your Department of Transportation. Sometimes they won't have access, and in that case, they'll be incredibly inexpensive because you can only walk to them and you'd have to get an easement to be able to access it. In other cases, they do have access and they're selling them at fair market value. For this project, there are two entities that purchase land. Number one, the DOT, that's the all the roadway right away. And then number two is the power utility. And they would have had to purchase not just this land, but likely land all the way around it from the previous owner. So after building the project, they know exactly what they need. They want the dam property in areas directly adjacent to it and likely land for future expansion of their utilities. If they have other sorts of uh, utility infrastructure that they're going to build, they're going to reserve that land, but they're going to sell the rest of it. And it's more valuable now because it has roadway access. The other thing that has, that, that, that the utility noticed is that there is something up in these mountains. They've heard that there's gold or iron ore. And as a result, they're actively marketing that and working with the Department of Transportation to bring a road into here. So this is not a cul-de-sac, number one. And number two, so there is access to some of these natural resources. And you can see that there is a ton of ore right here. There's also oil right here. We're not gonna take advantage of that most likely, but the ore definitely is going to be a part of the reason why this area develops. But for the time being, this is going to be folks that I have an interest in this area after working here. And it's going to be a small town, very small town, not a village, not a city. So this would be an unincorporated area with maybe a town board, a post office, the, the, the sort of uh, the sort of infrastructure that you would expect to see in an unincorporated rural place, a town hall, perhaps. And uh, they would rely on the county for uh, police and fire protection. And they might even rely on other school uh, districts to, to provide schooling to their children. They might have their own, own uh, elementary school or something of that nature, but likely not a high school. So let's build, let's identify where Otter Lake is. For the time being, we're gonna be fairly rough with it. And now we need to bring a road up here, but I don't wanna start here. I wanna start on the highway. And the reason why I wanna start at the highway is because we are going to make some highway improvements before we build our town. So the DOT has looked at this. Uh, they have been petitioned by the uh, electric utility to not cul-de-sac this. And they have said that that is something that they are interested in. In addition, they are interested in improving this interche intersection right here on the highway. They want this to be completely access controlled rather than having stops and, 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 and different movements right here. This is not desirable for an urban area uh, and often access control plans will occur to prevent this sort of thing from happening. So let's get to it. And what the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and take a look at the most appropriate place for an interchange. So as we're looking here, it can't be on this side because then we have to cross the railroad. If we go too far this way, we're on a hill. This is probably the most suitable place for it. So to accomplish this, I wanted to pull up this terrain view because we are going to raise this road and flatten this out. And now we're going to go in and use our slope tool to fix this slope. Now, this is something that the DOT would have a great deal of interest in. They might even leave just a, uh, a sheer cliffside like this. Obviously, the trees would be gone doing some blasting to make sure that the road is flat. We're gonna fix all of the roads in between here and Shorewood, but this is where we're gonna have our interchange. So what we're gonna build here is a small trumpet just across the water here and get up and make our connection. So again, we're gonna to need to pay close attention to our grades. And the very first thing we're gonna do is smooth out the area behind where the interchange will be. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is copy the road and we are going to, I'm gonna pull this over. We've got a whole bunch of my tools over here. I don't know why. 
Uh, not, not a problem. But I want to use toggle it to get those terrain lines on. That's really helpful when you're building interchanges. So now I can see where the center is. I'm going to raise this up just a bit. And then I'm going to make the, 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 the circle on the trumpet. We'll go five units. So if we're doing that, I want to go five units out to make sure that I have enough to, uh, to actually, that I have enough space to, for, the, for the curve there. Then I'm going to go another five units up, five units around, five units over, and then five units down again. And then from here, we will start to make our connections. Now this looks really broken and messy, but it won't by the time we're done. So what we're gonna start with is, I wanna take this node and set it to the highway height. This node can honestly disappear. It's not gonna be helpful. And already things are starting to look better. You're gonna slope this from here all the way up to here. There's 13.2%, let's spread that out. Now we're looking good. So node controller action, because that uh, is, is very helpful now. So control N, pop in here, and we will square these up. And then I'm gonna slide this back just a little bit, holding Alt inside of move it, just to clean this up. And then I wanna look at my node just to make sure I don't have an extra node. This one is probably not super useful anymore, but it's, it's fine. I am going to just one last time look at this. I'm also going to go into Intersection Marking Tool, which is Control L, or you can click on this, and I'm going to add some markings. And there we go. So I could just mirror this everywhere here as well. I'm going to say this is a template. I used to have some templates, uh, but I don't anymore. Uh, that color is not quite right. I'm going to really struggle to get that right. Okay, and we can do the exact same thing over here. Okay, and for this line, I'll click on this little apply template button and there we go. We've applied our template and then finish up there. So the last thing we need to do is go into our lane connectors. We'll click on this. Control S, stay in the lane. Control S, same thing there. I should really make sure that my, yeah, my connectors are wrong. So we will get that fixed and then clean this up. So this is ready to rock and roll, except for this side, which we will take care of as soon as we get our path across here figured out. So I wanna mirror the height that we have over here across the river. It's gonna be kind of a long bridge. Okay, well this did some things. <laughs> so we'll have to go in and move it and clean it up just a bit. There we go. And right here, we're gonna convert this one we're going to upgrade this. I'll make this one at grade. And we're going to move these nodes just a bit for realism's sake. I think it would be significantly cheaper to move some dirt here than it would be to construct gigantic bridge spans. Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Uh, no, no, no. Now there we go. And let's do a bit of earthwork here to clean this up. There we go. And over here, we're gonna need to do some work as well. Obviously, we need a pad that we can work from and this doesn't quite give us one. There we go. So, let's get this thing moving. So we'll get this coming across. We're gonna make sure this stays level with the ground and we're gonna need to figure out just how high we're gonna go. This is interesting. I do not understand why this one segment is snow covered. <laughs> it's just bizarre to me. Let's take a look. Can I upgrade this? I wonder if it thought that it was, yeah, interesting. So it was treating it like it was a, uh, one of these bridges that have, you know, some of the, some of the, these, these bridges with cables and things of that nature. Uh, yeah, that's not what we're doing. <laughs> and I, before we head away, I do want to do a couple of things. I like to slope these. I think it makes it look a little bit more natural. So now we're gonna need to make our way up the hillside and end up over here. We're gonna start over here now and start working our road around. Now here's my curiosity, and I, I wish that there was an easier way to do this. Obviously this is lower, but I'm not sure how much lower it is. But what I do know is that 
if I come around here, it's, I guess it's right here. Approximately right here. So I've got to make my way all the way down. So that shouldn't be a, a huge problem with how much land we have to cover. Now I'm at just about the perfect height, so we don't want to deviate from this at all. And then finally, we're going to come through here and make our connection. There we go. Really nice. Now I do want to go through and we are going to go through and check our slopes. Uh, just not, this is a, this is going to be a, a challenging road already. Let's not, uh, let's not make it worse because I, I screw up some, some nodes. <laughs> You can see that there are a couple spots where it gets a little dicey. So going through and doing this is very useful. Now it's a nice gentle road. We could clean this up a little bit more if we wanted to. You know, but truthfully, I'm pretty pleased with it. This is a country road. I don't think they would invest all that heavily in guardrails or things of that nature unless there was a problem, unfortunately. And part of this is it's, you know, there's maybe over here there be some guardrails. So I am going to add some just along here. This is a sheer cliff. I'm going to add some here as well. Beyond that, not all that many that I'm going to add. And I will use the freeform tool for this. This will not be perfect, but it will be perfectly acceptable. Okay, so I, 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 I added quite a bit of guardrail. And Thankfully, it's in the right direction. That was something I was worried about. You can reverse these by using the, the upgrade tool, just like it reverse the di directionality of a, of a road. Could consider some here, but this is particularly right here. This is where I think safety would be what would dictate whether or not guardrails are installed there. And it looks like I forgot to add my secondary movement, which is off from here. So that is the next thing that we need to do. So we'll add the snap twos. And I'm a bit concerned that it wants me to be a little bit further away than I was hoping. It's actually not that bad. So I will live with it. Okay, that's pretty good. And then what we're gonna do is, first of all, just make sure that our, our, our directionality is correct. And then we need to check our slopes here as well. There we go. And apparently this is a really great cut through. <laughs> I don't really understand that at all. So there we go. And I almost would prefer that this is a little bit more curved coming up into here. I think that makes it a bit more natural. And then we'll use node controller again to square these up. And that kind of broke what I had done before. So we'll need to look at that again. Okay, and now we will slope this one last time. Hopefully this, this is it for us. <laughs> and truthfully, when you look, it seems like it's a bit high over here. And oh, one more. Actually, I'm wondering if the reason that this looks strange is actually has more to do with the ground than anything else. It looks all right. All right, well, we, we, we can forgive that. So... Interesting. This line is a different color than this one. And this one, my template is way worse than the other one. I'm going to figure that out, but I'm not going to subject you guys to that. That's <laughs> kind of a kind of a, a frustrating process it can be. So, And then we'll slope these. I'm going to slope this as well. Actually, I'll set that to a middle and that should make it even better. And then the last thing, I, I picked up one asset. And I know that I'm a bit behind on my asset lists. I am working on it. I am desperately working on it, but uh, it's uh, it's still a thing. So this barrier, I think is gonna be really spectacular to prevent people from heading up the highway in the wrong direction. I don't love what that did. So I'm gonna turn everything off. We've got anarchy on and I will do it myself. So this is a network asset, so it runs in a line and I can place it just like that. Look at how nice that looks. I come all the way down to here. And then I think the reason this didn't look very good. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know what that is. And that looks, that is wild. <laughs> we're just gonna, we're just gonna, uh, until I, uh, have a bit more of an understanding as to why it's going nuts. 
we will forget that. Although I thought that I was able to raise the height of this. Obviously, it's not letting me. And interestingly, the paint color from the line tool is showing up on these barriers. So perhaps having that isn't isn't even beneficial. There we go. That's so much better. And then the very last thing, we need to go back here into traffic manager and make sure that we use control s to make sure that things are lining up so people aren't driving through the barriers the other thing i want to check i just want to make sure that people are, are i'll look at the junction restrictions and what you'll see is that people cannot proceed through here that's a problem so let's just manually set these if you want to make sure you're doing it at the right spot you just come over here and line it up appropriately so this is frustrating. This is occurring. I think they're they're skipping this queue. And wow, that seems very steep. Far steeper than I was hoping. Part of the reason that this is occurring, we're gonna, we're gonna fix it. We can't we can't just leave that. I'm gonna let perfect be the enemy of good. If I slide this up, it will fix my heights a bit. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Of course, I gotta go back in the node controller and square it up. Yeah, but that's so much better. Uh, so I'm thinking that if we go into Traffic Manager and take a look at our speeds, yeah, it's 100 kilometers per hour. I'm going to switch it to miles per hour so I understand it. <laughs> and we'll, we'll, we'll change this ramp to be, we'll hold down Shift and change it to 35. And here we're going to say 45 around here and across the bridge. And truthfully, at least in my area, on a highway like this, you're looking at 55 as a max speed. Probably the same thing here as well. Uh, truthfully though, to, to get this right, I'm gonna have to change every single highway on the map unless applied it. There we go, apply the whole road. And now it is good. So the default speed, yeah, we don't want, we don't want to change that. We're good, we're good here. There we go. So one down and I think it's going to function. Well, let's just make sure it's working. Do we have any traffic? No. And why would we? <laughs> Otter Lake has not been built yet. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is going to be a very challenging place to build. If we take a look at our terrain heights, we've got basically this area right here and nowhere else. Everything else is on a slope, which means that for every single road that we build, we're going to need to create a level pad. It will make building here very expensive, but the payoff is you get to take a look at Otter Lake. So this will be the main drag. It's going to be a very small town to start out with. And there will be a couple of homes coming off from here. Interestingly, my snap tools just are not working the way that they should. I'm wondering if that's because of node snapping, if that's part of the issue. Yeah, I think that was it. And I am going to go absolutely wild with my terrain heights. And let's see what the slopes look like here. I'm guessing it's not good. And I should really learn the shortcut to control S or control five, control five. At 20. <laughs> yeah, that, that would not be a fun hill in the winter, which it is now. Oh, and that is not what we want to do either. Let's try it. Control five. Did not work. <laughs> now, I wonder if that is on the numpad, which I, I have a Bluetooth numpad but uh, I use a keyboard that does not have a, a numpad. So um, at least for this, for editing, I certainly have a numpad, <laughs> but, but not here. So this is gonna be very, very steep. We're not respecting our topography, but that often happens in older developments. And then from here, we're going to cut up and again, follow this terrain height. And that's going to be the way that we form many of the roads here. We'll just follow these terrain heights. Doesn't necessarily have to be a major terrain height, but it will be a terrain height. One of the things I like is it's creating small lots. And I feel like that's totally appropriate in a place like this. In fact, this road is not perfectly straight. I think I'm going to straighten it out just for the sake of what I'm doing. I want to mirror things just a bit. So we'll do enough grading to basically create straight roads. And now I want to take a look in here again. We'll look at our slope terrain tool and I want to see what this looks like. Yeah, we've got this segment here that's really steep. 
we are going to straighten some of these out and be a little bit more choosy with what we're doing. And I do want this to cut back around before this starts dropping off too much. And this will ensure that we don't have a cul-de-sac. There will be a number of cul-de-sacs though in an area like this. And it's pretty unavoidable that you would have some. So we're not going to worry about it too much. For some reason, I just keep hitting TMP. It's just, uh, it's like a, it's a nervous tick today or something. So I'm just going to move it out of the way so I stop. <laughs> There we go, and uh, that's still very steep. 15% will drop that down. And I also want to be able to cut across here at some point. And what is this? Woo! That is gnarly. So we are going to look at our terrain and drop this down here in an effort to, to resolve this somewhat. So, yeah, it, it, truthfully, as I as I as I look through this, we may just need to uh, level some some pads here, and not have quite as much connectivity. As you can see, that what I've ended up doing is basically carving into the hillside anyway, having these areas that are kind of poking up, not all that desirable. So that said, you know, thinking of a place like Duluth, Minnesota, uh, I mean, there's a lot of <laughs> very steep things going on there and a lot of that is just you're following your plan <laughs> even if it doesn't necessarily do exactly what you'd hope in terms of uh respecting the topography hmm that was not what i wanted to do so i want to make sure that we are uh, yeah I'm, I'm sinking down so that's one of the things i struggle with with the fine road anarchy tool is that I will sometimes have issues like this where I will dip down. There we go. So again, this is another one where we are going to take a look and slope it up. And we're not going to go too extreme here with the number of homes that we build. This is a small community. And uh, even on this road right here, we're going to allow some zoning and just slow the highway speed here. And let's get these roads upgraded. Now, these would be very basic roads. So as I look through here, the type of road that I want is going to be something that, uh, you know, doesn't have sidewalks. I would not expect, maybe on this main street, you'd see some sidewalks, but, but really nowhere else. So we're just going to use our country roads here. I wonder. I... I always feel conflicted with these country roads, um, just basically because of the way the asset works. The building's set back a little ways. I think it can look a little bit uncomfortable. And then the very last thing I'm gonna do is kind of pop through and smooth things out just a little bit. I'm gonna use my fuzziest brush and just come through here. And if there are little areas where I can touch things up, uh, if we want this to look really good, I'm not gonna plop, plop everything. That's not my style. But if we want it to look really good, we could take a look at the building heights for the buildings that spawn and try to make sure that they look as natural as they can. So we're going to need utilities here and we are going to need uh, some basic city services, but we're not going to go all out. Uh, one of the things about this area is it's relatively isolated from everything else. I am going to run this under the highway. Actually, I'm going to... Hmm. I think that what I'm going to do is cut across here and call it an easement. This may need to change in the future. Obviously this sort of thing, you know, we would never see a geothermal plant <laughs> serving all of these little rural communities. So I will take some liberties because uh, that's it's a game. And I'm not even going to worry about looping this. The other thing that we're going to need is some sort of transformer. Hmm, and I don't really have one that's appropriately sized for this. Uh, I think I will use an earthquake sensor, assuming I can spell it, and I'll throw on some vanilla assets, and we'll say that this is our transformer here. And truthfully, now that I think about it, we're just gonna roll without it because we're not gonna need it. We are going to think about our city a little bit right now. So this corner right here, if we were visioning for our city, this is the most important node in the entire community. It is the hub of life 
and as a result we are going to have a special use there and our special use will be a post office and i'm totally fine going with one of the vanilla post offices or even this small brick post office i know that we've used this already but these sorts of things uh, I wouldn't call them the most dynamic uses in terms of the way that they, uh, the architecture that's there. Yeah, I honestly like this one a little bit more. We will use this. And we'll put that right off the main drag. We are going to need a parking lot for this. There's no parking lot included with this asset. So why don't we build one of those very quickly? And I was going to build a parking lot, but honestly, this is so small that I might just steal that parking lot asset that I love placing. There we go. And we'll just bring that over here. Every community deserves one of these little ploppable parking lots. There we go. And we can even straighten it out and make it look a little better if we want. Very nice indeed. And right here, we'll have some other commercial buildings just form right on this road. And truthfully, we'd probably get a gas station as well. I might hold off on that for now. I'll just reserve this space on the other side of the road. And this will eventually be where we get... Actually, let's just do it right now. So those are our assets that we're going to use for this. I am going to build a little area for this. We'll go ahead and we will use some of the assets from our parking lots. I'm going to spread this out just a little ways, give ourselves a little bit of space to operate, and we will put in some concrete underneath there. And they are going to want some sort of fence for liability reasons. Also, I do not like what this is doing. I think it's an object heights issue. So why don't we raise this up just a little bit? It's also too close. So we'll back this up, raise it up. And we'll need to adjust everything just a little bit. And then, like I mentioned, the fencing. There we go. I think that's a little bit more natural here. It'd also be nice to get a couple of trees. Even though it's winter, we'll just add just a couple. We're not going to leave this completely bare just because we can't exactly tell what, uh, what we have in terms of trees. <laughs> and the other thing with the gas station is we have signage. So they have their gas station sign that would tell the prices. They're going to want that. Then their big sign, they're going to want to advertise to everyone how great their prices are. And I hate this. <laughs> That's terrible. The very first thing you see as you come across here is a marathon sign. We're going to at least do one thing. That height is absolutely crazy. We're going to draw. It won't even let me do that. Oh. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> I've got an idea. It's so tall because it's on the side. <laughs> there we go. Now maybe it's not. Maybe it's a little more palatable. No, it's terrible. It's still terrible. I will just swallow my pride and know that this is what happens. Uh, gas stations want to be seen. This is the gas station in this town. And it wants to be seen. So... It is seen. <laughs> it is very seen. All right, and this is about all that I would expect in this town in terms of commercial activity. You might actually start seeing some homes coming down this main road. Uh, I am going to zone basically everything here. We're going to go with our default zoning set that we have, which is just uh, our American style homes. I'm going to actually, now that I think about it, we're going to we're going to add to that. Uh, because the American style uh, homes, historic American, it's just, they're all very large. So we're going to throw in DK's, sub, DK's uh, suburban homes as well. Because they give us a little bit more room to operate. So coming here, go into themes. Enable theme management for this district. Get rid of unified UI. Oh, and uh, DK post-war is what it is called. The other thing that we may include in this area at some point, maybe in a, in a more secluded area, will be some trailer homes. Um, I think that that would make a ton of sense in this area. I'm also thinking that we're going to add just generally to Otter Lake. And now I see that Otter Lake no longer extends throughout the entire community. We are going to add in right off the bat our auto-oriented commercial. 
because I would fully expect some of these historic buildings to come down. And we'll switch the time of day so we can see the beauty of these buildings. I guess you only see it at night. <laughs> I would fully expect uh, one of these buildings to be ripped down and replaced, unfortunately, with a McDonald's or something of that nature. In fact, let's see what happens when we get rid of that one. And then the very last thing we need, uh, well, not the very last thing, we, we, we'll need uh, some police and fire coverage here. We're going to go very minimal. <laughs> we could go with the Ghostbusters building, which truthfully isn't the worst asset for this area. Uh, because we want a very small fire station. I think we're going to go with fire station 3, which is kind of urban looking. But I think it fits well in this area. In fact, I might grab this and just add it right on in. And make it fit in between these buildings. Unless it's going to remain mad at me, because I don't want that. <laughs> and it looks like it will. I wonder if I sneak it in next to the post office on that side of the road. Yeah, I can, I can, I can live with that a little bit more. There we go, and that gives us additional land that we can develop as well. So once again, I will delete this building because I am a monster <laughs> that apparently likes to destroy uh, buildings. So, uh, as far as police coverage goes, I forgot to bring in a very special asset. I will do that in the next one and to the creator. I'm very sorry. I forgot, but I will not forget again. Uh, we're going to need to flatten some terrain if we want to build up there. And I think we're going to do that for the homes that are up here, but that's not an appropriate space. We're going to want to keep our city services pretty, pretty tight. So we're going to add that right here. Truthfully, I, I almost, yeah, I'm going to, Put it off from this main road. And the trees on this one are very extreme. Uh, and the height change here is very challenging as well. I really wanted to keep those close, but I'm going to have to use the surface painter to make this look a little bit better. The other thing I can do is I I'm going to level this out just a bit. It is very, this is a challenging workspace to say the least. So in this community, there are just going to be some places where it is a little lumpy, a little bumpy. We could get very hardcore about that and, you know, throw in a bunch of retaining walls and things of that nature. It's just not really my style. I'm not really that kind of builder. So we're not going to we're not going to do that. Uh, interestingly, we're, we're struggling with unemployment here. And I'm curious, not enough workers. Where are all these workers going? Where are they heading to? <laughs> Way out of town. <laughs> There's actually quite a bit of things happening here. Lots of jobs, overeducated workers coming to it. Uneducated one out of four. Ooh, man, this is really, really bad. Um, the other, the very last, no, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> there are two more things I want to have here. I wanna have an elementary school. Well, actually, we're gonna skip schools for now. We need one community park. Everyone deserves the dignity of a park, in my in my opinion. Uh, I think that being able to access a park, uh, if you live in any size community, large or small, uh, you, you deserve that that much. So that's what we are going to take a look at, adding a park. Now, the park that we add, unsure of what that should be just yet. Probably not a golf course. <laughs> and I, I haven't done this much, but I think I'm going to go with just a small playground from the vanilla. We, we did that quite a bit in Ashland, but we have not done that anywhere else. The nice thing about these is they terraform, so we don't have to worry about any of that madness. And we can make some nice connections. Unfortunately, we're also going to take out this small house. I'm going to center that. And now I'm a lot happier with the way that this looks. And it's not chirping at me that it's, it's not connected. So I think we're good there. <laughs> we're gonna, we've got to be good somewhere because we're not doing well with uh, housing and things of that nature right now. So the, the very last thing that we're going to do, and I keep saying that, but we're, th this time I mean it. We are going to work on our grades just a little bit in this area so that we can actually build some homes. And then I'm going to go ahead and upgrade these. 
And what that will do is allow me to use the full building envelope here. And now we're looking a lot better. And we can do the exact same thing here. It looks like there's one home that for whatever reason, uh, well, not for whatever reason, but for the terrain heights, we can't build. We just need to clean this up just a bit. And not like that, like this. <laughs> and now we've given ourselves a little bit more room to operate and provided a little bit, uh, uh, some, some nicer lots. So the homes will be a little bit flatter on there. I think it's going to look a lot nicer. Uh, so I do want to, uh, as I, as I say, we're done. <laughs> I do want to preserve some access to the water. Why live in Otter Lake if you have no access to the water? So we are going to ensure that we preserve that. And I will take a look at the terrain and follow this line very tightly. And then we'll have this terrible road that we need to fix. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not going to work right there. So I will get rid of that. We're going to come in with this right here and use a bit of eminent domain because obviously that is what a small town would have to do to access the water. <laughs> There we go. And I'm gonna hold off from zoning anything here because the reason that we did this was not to get some sweet waterfront lots. The reason that we did this is so that we can have a couple of docks so people could go fishing and enjoy the nature in this area. Take a look at the otters in the lake and uh, really enjoy this, this uh, the nature of this place. That's, to me, if you live in a place like this and you're not taking advantage of the nature, you're, you're living in the wrong place. Then again, anyone can live where they want to live. <laughs> so who am I to judge or say? And it's fascinating how much parking is already there at the park <laughs> or at the, at the docks over here. But there we go. I, I think that we've, uh, we've created a neat little city and I kind of want to take a look at this building and have a quick city tour. Okay, Otter Lake is growing and looking like an interesting little place. There are things that we didn't do today that I wanted to get to, but we just ran out of time. This is one of them. Shorewood, you will get your interchange before you know it in the next episode. But uh, for today, we're going to leave it here. I hope that you like this. If you did hit the like button, if you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. And I cannot wait to see you in the next one. I also want to give a huge shout out to my editor, Chris. Uh, Excellent, excellent, excellent work on the montage last time. Everyone seemed to really like that, and I did as well. So thank you so much, Chris. Uh, I will see you all in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.